So last week, Adam started talking with us about the different refrains that exist in our lives. And I wanted to keep up the fun and share three of the songs that are crucial in my life right now. First is Shivers by the man, the myth, the legend, Ed Sheeran. The only reason I like this song and still listen to it on repeat sometimes is because I know the line dance to it. Find me sometime and I'll teach it to you. It's one of the first line dances I learned except for Cotton Eye Joe and those other ones you learn in gym class. Second is Wild Ones by Flo Rida. This one is my gym hype up song. Anytime it's raining outside or I just don't feel like going to the gym, this is my song. Last but not least, this one is my personal favorite song to share with you. Mistletoe by none other than Justin Bieber. I wake my little brother, hi Nathan, up every Christmas morning to this song. I blast it so loud, usually around 7 a.m., to announce that it is officially time for to open the presents that Santa left for us. I'm sure that as I was saying my songs, you thought of a song that means something to you. You have five seconds to think of your favorite part of that song and do a little dance in your seat to it. Here we go, cue the music. These songs in your life may have carried you through failed tests, bad breakups, drama at home, or maybe there are songs that bring you an indescribable sense of peace. Maybe you and Bay have your song and it's so cute, then you break up, and then you hate that song? Ugh, relatable. Anyways, these refrains echo through our lives and they hold a special place in our brain space, right? Well, the same is true for the people of God in the Bible. There's a book called Psalms that served as a songbook or mixtape of the people of God. And a certain few of these Psalms, called the Psalms of Ascent, were sung as a way to remember everything that God did for them. This series is meant to let you hear some core truths about God and to challenge you to take some refrains we find in the Psalms and apply them to your life when you need them the most. So to begin, let me read Psalm 124. Go ahead and stand up with me. Whether you're at a campus or you're watching online tonight, um, let's pause for a moment and prepare our hearts to hear the scripture. As I read, let's stand together in reverence of the word of the Lord. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat. What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You can have a seat. When I read this passage, I'm reminded of movies where the hero gets out just in the nick of time. So any Marvel or superhero movie, any other Marvel fans in the room? Maybe Batman, DC, I don't know, I don't like those, just Marvel. Anyways, it seems that at just the right moment, Spider-Man decides to trust his Spidey sense, like in Far From Home, or when Black Panther has to outwit Killmonger, or when Captain Marvel had to confront her former Kree sparring partner. When we walk away from these movies, we usually walk out with one feeling, the heroes won, and that's inspiring, right? We walk out excited and ready to share that we saw the Avengers conquer Ultron, or Thor, my personal favorite superhero, figured out Loki's schemes and protected the people of Earth. We feel all the hope coming out of those movies, right? But I think we often forget about what the hero had to go through to get to that victory. Spider-Man got his butt kicked for the previous 20 minutes of that movie while he was still mourning the death of his mentor and his friends were being hunted down by the bad guy. Black Panther was watching his country engage in civil war and Captain Marvel uncovered a genocidal plot by her own people. Though the bad guys lost in the end, there was still pain all the way through the movie. There was still loss, there was still anger, frustration, confusion, and evil seemed to prevail even if only for a brief period of time. So it might be confusing when we decide to follow God but still experience pain. When we first start following God, there is an illusion that everything's gonna be fine. 
And we're told that God is going to wrong every right and God would be our defender and whatever else. But we still experience pain. I had the opportunity to be an intern with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the summer of 2020. That summer was like a full summer of CIY for me. I was on such a spiritual high, I trusted God completely, and I was pursuing everything in life with a new passion. But then, you knew that was coming, right? The storm started. It began with breaking up with my boyfriend and best friend of three years at the time. Then we learned that my grandfather's health was really declining. Because of this, my family decided to move to take care of him and my grandmother. At this point, I lost my best friend, was losing my grandfather, and my childhood home where all my favorite memories had taken place. Then my grandfather passed away. We spent our first holiday season without him and the normal things you do over Christmas break. We ended up moving for a second time back to Hartford County just four months after we were settled in my grandparents' house. I was getting hit by raging waters sweeping over me, just like Psalm 124 talks about. Remember that spiritual high I talked about? Yeah, that was no longer. I felt anxious and sad every day of that season of life. At first, I didn't know who or what to turn to in my loneliness. I knew that Jesus was with me, but I didn't feel it. I was feeling caught in the hunter's net with no way out. Let me go back to read those verses from Psalm 124. What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. God's people remembered this refrain because far too often in their lives they were under attack. They saw the destruction of war regularly. They lived in a time period where war was never not an option. Gathering land and growing your kingdom was the name of the game. For God's people, God caused miracle after miracle to protect them. When God's people stared into the face of invaders, they knew God was not going to allow them to be conquered. Their help, verse eight says, came from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The people of God relied on God for their protection, which honestly sounds kind of weird until you read through the Old Testament. Stories like David and Goliath, or the time when Moses brought God's people out of Egypt. There's a story of Samson with his long hair or his sketchy girlfriend, or Joseph with his epic rise and fall, and rise again, and fall again, and then to rise again. Even through the arrival of Jesus, these stories and characters capture the essence of God's faithfulness, that God's going to carry us through our pain. God's gonna defend his people. And I'm just curious, because I know it's true for me, so I wonder if it's true for you. When you feel like you're under attack, in whatever way that may feel like, if you don't think you're ever good enough for your teachers, your coaches, or your parents, if you're someone who's bullied at school or in your neighborhood, if you're constantly being pestered to be a part of stuff you don't wanna be a part of, if you see the ways of the world around you trying to pressure you into doing things that you really don't wanna do, do you consider God, the creator of the universe, the one who knows how many hairs are on your head, do you consider him as a part of your defense? Because I know for me, when that storm was happening in my life, I was not considering God as a part of my defense. So this became a season where I had to seek him out through reading scripture and praying often. The days I was extra anxious, I realized I hadn't spent any time with the Lord in any capacity. It could have been through a podcast, time in the Bible, prayer, singing worship music in the car. On those days that I did connect with Jesus, that anxiety was still there, but it was greatly relieved. This only happened when I connected with the King of the universe who knew exactly how I was feeling and promised in his word that he would carry me through. If I didn't know Jesus, I don't know where I would be now because of those months. It might feel odd and it might not feel right to you in the moment, but with God on your side, pain is a step toward your victory. In other words, God carries us through our pain. Life will be hard, 
And in my experience, the things life throws at you will have a bigger and bigger impact on you. So it's not a question of whether or not you can avoid pain. The people of God understood this because they continued to say, Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken. We are free. They knew that if God was going with them, nothing was going to take them out. Nothing was going to overwhelm them. No outside pressure, no temptation, no bad habits, no crazy expectations were going to sweep them off their feet or engulf them. God was going to carry them through their pain. All right, shake it out, look alive. As a part of this series, we're going to challenge you. As you think through the refrains or mixtape of your life, consider making this song a part of it. Memorize this passage and let this refrain emerge in your life when you absolutely need it. Let's stand again in reverence of the word of the Lord and say this verse together. Praise the Lord who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken. We are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. As you remain standing, consider this question before you leave for your group tonight. Are you willing to allow God to protect you through your pain? My hope for each and every one of you is that you would trust God to defend you, even in the most painful times. Thank you.